This is a practice exercise from page 212 in the textbook. We're dealing with the energy of photons. So dealing with the energy of photons, we should notice that they're giving us a value for frequency. So we have this equation E equals H times frequency, where E is energy, H is Planck's constant, and that V, which is actually the Greek letter nu, is the frequency. So that means that what we need is that H value. That's a constant, so we can look it up. H is going to be equal to 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34 joules times seconds. So in order to use this equation, we're just going to solve for E. So the energy of this photon is just going to be equal to that H value. with units of joules times seconds. We're going to multiply that by the frequency, which is 4.69 times 10 to the 14th inverse seconds. So if we look at this calculation, the units of seconds are going to cancel. We're going to be left with units of joules. This makes sense, since we're calculating an energy, that that energy should be in units of joules. So plugging that into your calculator, rounding that to three significant figures, you should get 3.11 times 10 to the negative 19 joules. So this is a very, very small number, but that makes sense because we were only looking at the energy of one photon. If you want more energy, you need to have more photons. So a lot of times you'll see calculations that ask you for the energy of a mole's worth of photons. So you would just multiply this number by how many photons are in a mole. So that's Avogadro's number, 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. We're going to do something similar in part B of this problem. So now they're telling us that instead of emitting one photon, we are emitting 5.0 times 10 to the 17 photons, and they still want to know the total energy. So if I take a look at that first problem I solved, that energy is actually the energy per photon. So that's the energy per photon. I can essentially use it as a conversion factor. So I know that I've got 5.0 times 10 to the 17 photons. And I know that I am emitting 3.11 times 10 to the negative 19th joules of energy for every photon that's emitted. So my units of photons are going to cancel. I'm going to be left with units of joules. Again, I'm going to round to two significant figures because I only have two right here, and that will give me an answer of 0 0.16 joules. So notice how much larger this answer is from the previous answer, because now I'm not just looking at the energy of one photon, I'm looking at the energy of a lot of photons. Still not quite a full mole, but a lot more photons than just one. So the last part of this problem, kind of working backwards, now they're telling us how much energy is emitted and they want us to figure out how many photons this is. So starting with what we know, 1.3 times 10 to the negative 2 joules of energy, and we know that every one photon has 3.11 times 10 to the negative 19 joules of energy. So now our units of joules are going to cancel, we're going to be left with units of photons. Make sure you can put that into your calculator correctly, round it to two significant figures, and you should get 4.2 times 10 to the 16 photons. So just a couple of manipulations using energy per photon as a conversion factor. The biggest thing you want to watch out for is up in that initial problem. When we solve for this energy in joules, so using this equation E equals H times frequency, when we solved, that number we got is not joules per mole or anything like that, it's just joules per photon. So keeping that in mind allows you to use this as a conversion factor. So just be very clear with what units all of your answers are in and see if you can use them to solve additional problems.